Victim mentality can be a huge obstacle to building healthy and meaningful relationships, whether those are intimate partnerships or friendships or even in your co-working space with your other family members. When someone you know consistently plays the victim, this becomes a very toxic and exhausting dynamic. In this video, I'll go over the characteristics of the victim mentality or the victim. Although some of it sounds obvious, some of it may surprise you. Then I'll explain some of the reasons why, why people become this way. I'll share some personal stories and tell you what you can do to handle someone like that. So let's dive right in. The victims often shift the focus from their own actions and responsibilities to perceived wrongs done to them. Shifting the, the blame helps them avoid accountability. Person playing the victim expects sympathy and may manipulate situations to frame themselves as helpless and wronged to elicit that sympathy. They complain a lot, especially about how unfair things are and how others take advantage of them. They tend to focus on negative events and be pessimistic and fearful. Using these negative events as proof that they're mistreated, misjudged, or wronged, they may recall negative events more vividly, more consistently, while overlooking positive outcomes and all the ways in which things went right for them. They're masters of learned helplessness. This results in a lack of motivation to take proactive steps towards improving or changing. Because why? If you can have someone else do something for you. They might dismiss suggestions for improvement, finding reasons why nothing can be done, which reinforces their belief that they're trapped in a bad situation. So despite of all your efforts to help them out and point things out and give them suggestions, they won't go for it. They want validation for their struggles rather than solutions. They want others to feel sorry for them and do things for them. Sometimes they frame themselves as self-sacrificing, the martyr, or suffering for a long time to evoke sympathy, but mainly to justify why they deserve help or special treatment. So they make themselves exceptional in a way. A person with a victim mentality might use guilt tripping to manipulate you, um, that way they'll get what they want, if nothing else helps. When confronted or given feedback, they often become very defensive, uh, perceiving that as a personal attack. Even if it's constructive criticism, they will use that as proof that others are against them. They overreact in conflict. Um, so these exaggerated emotional reactions are very difficult to be around instead of, you know, resolving things calmly. They might have difficulty seeing situations from other people's perspective or recognizing that their actions might have contributed to the problems. They, they hold grudges like for ever and repeat all those stories again and again as proof of their victimhood. Victims exhibit cognitive distortions like catastrophizing. So no matter what, they're always imagining worst case scenario, expecting worst possible outcomes. Makes it pretty daunting to be around them. No matter what is coming up, that will make it sound awful. Individuals with a victim mentality often see situations in black and white terms. So you hear them say things like, I'm always wronged or everyone is always taking advantage of me. Um, 
or everyone is against me. So that kind of language is very common for victim mentality people. And of course, they don't recognize their role in a situation or any nuances in the situation. And they can't really see anything from another person's perspective. So communication with the victim becomes a battleground. Um, the victim playing person twists words and situations to fit their narrative. Uh, the other person may feel like they're constantly on the defensive, trying to justify their own actions or prove to the victim that they're innocent or they're trying to be helpful or to appease the victim. The emotional toll of this constant drama can be overwhelming, leading to anxiety, depression, even physical health problems. You just feel like you can never do enough for them no matter how much you try no matter how much effort resources attention you give them it's just not enough and it's not good enough meanwhile the victim playing person may feel a false sense of security thinking they're justified in their actions and that the world owes them a favor or whatever they're asking for sound familiar Okay, wondering why they're like that. So it's complicated. The psychological reasons behind victim mentality are very complex and varied. Not everybody gets there following the same path. So past trauma from physical or emotional abuse is a big one. It can lead people to internalize the belief that they're powerless and helpless and that others are out to get them. It's almost like one's burned twice shy. If someone repeatedly experiences failure or difficulty for whatever reason, maybe just circumstantial, they may start to believe that their efforts will never lead to success and they feel defeated and they feel a sense of resignation and so they see the world as unfair. People who grow up in environments where they had little control over their circumstances, such as chaotic households, financial instability, or unpredictable authority figures, can also develop a belief that they're at the mercy of external forces. So that's also kind of trauma. So obviously things can get tangled up and complicated and piled up on top of each other. If someone grew up in a household where one or both parents exhibited a victim mentality and were successful in getting what they want, the children might adopt similar patterns because they grow up observing the ways their caregivers respond to adversity. And if it's working for the adults, it will work for the kids. So they will adopt the same coping mechanisms. In some cases, overly protective or enabling parents like helicopter moms and dads may shield, the uh, may shield the children from consequences or hardships and that leads the kids to believe they're helpless or incapable of handling difficulties. Expecting them to be perfect, to get it right every single time also makes them feel unsuccessful. This can result in a reliance on others to fix their problems or provide emotional reassurance or even feelings of entitlement with the parents telling the kids how they deserve whatever they want. And if they don't get it, it's not their fault. It's the world's fault, the teachers, the society, whatever. So it's a terrible way of parenting. People who feel marginalized or ignored by society, institutions, or even within relationships may turn to victimhood as a way to express their dissatisfaction and seek acknowledgement of their struggles. And some of that is obviously valid in our uh, conflicted and polarized society. Some people develop a victim mentality because they learn that playing the victim garners sympathy, attention, or emotional support and gets them what they want. So this becomes like a learned behavior, learned helplessness. So they keep using this 
as a strategy. They seek out situations where other people will take care of them. They are not shy asking for help and favors. Some even feel entitled. I should say most of them feel entitled, justifying the entitlement with the suffering they've endured. Obviously, relationships with people like this would be strenuous and challenging. Whatever the cause, the effect on relationships is damaging. The victim becomes stuck in this cycle of helplessness while the ones close to them feel drained, resentful, and trapped. Especially if this is an intimate relationship under the same roof. One partner is trying to do everything they can for the other partner who's playing the victim and is never satisfied. The victim could potentially ruin or at least taint your relationships with other people as they complain about those people, as they relate stories of how they've been mistreated or taken advantage of by someone you know, maybe it's another family member, a friend, a co-worker, you get to hear that junk and it does affect how you think and feel about all those other people. I remember a moment when I finally realized the patterns of victim playing in one of my own relationships. It was like a light bulb went off. I suddenly saw how my mom's constant complaining and playing the martyr got her what she needed, mainly resources and attention, but also got her off the hook for things she could do to improve her own situation but didn't want to that breakthrough moment was a turning point for me as i learned to set boundaries communicate my needs and refuse to engage in the never-ending cycle of her victimhood it wasn't easy but it was necessary for my own growth and well-being so i'd been supporting her for decades, literally every extra penny I got, I was sending back home so she and my brother can be comfortable. And every conversation, every time the phone rang, I would become anxious because I knew they're going to just ask me for money. And then I just noticed that every conversation was about all the things they needed and how they just couldn't get it themselves. So somehow it was my responsibility to support them and I did for years and finally when that light bulb went off and that phone call came I simply said please do not call me anymore I'm not your purse I'm not your bank I've got my own future to worry about and I need to save money and I need to take care of myself so if the only reason you're going to call me is to ask for money then don't call me at all and I hung up and it took a whole year for her to call me back and say that she's sorry. And ever since, I've never offered to help financially or anything. And guess what they did? They figured it out. Both of them are young enough and strong enough where they could get jobs. And they did. When there was no other source of income, they figured it out. There are strategies you can use to handle the victim-minded people in your life too. I'm about to tell you what they are, but first, like, subscribe to my channel. It supports the channel and lets YouTube know that the info in this video is worth showing to other people. So you're helping me help others. Thank you. Okay, looking back, I realized that Dealing with a parent who plays the victim requires empathy, compassion, and a willingness to ten stand up for myself. You may not be able to fix the other person, but you can minimize the harmful dynamic by not enabling the victim and learning to say no to them without feeling guilty about it. So often, a person with a victim mentality will connect with a codependent. It's the perfect setup for both of them to daily enact their dysfunction. But if you're not the codependent and you're with a victim, 
you have to learn to say no and you have to have compassion for yourself you have to look at yourself and what is this costing you emotionally your resources your time and just say no and not feel guilty about it because you are not doing anything wrong by standing up for yourself and for your best interests especially if you've already done way too much for this one person who never considers it enough you then you don't have to accept their victimhood as the dominant narrative set clear boundaries like i did i said do not call me if only if the only reason you're calling me is to ask for money you can set your own boundaries whatever the situation is and stick to them and don't waver back i did not call back i waited until she called back and it took her a whole year maybe it would have never happened i don't know people are different but at the end of the day it's not worth it if all you do is give 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 and all they do is take 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 and it's never enough so set clear boundaries about what behavior is acceptable and what you want to tolerate um maybe you don't like the fact that they're always guilt tripping you uh you don't like the emotional manipulation you don't like the fact that they're uh like me you know using you for a resource in my case i said i was done supporting my mom and my brother when both of them could get jobs instead of letting the victim shift blame or dwell on how they've been wronged or how unfair or impossible something is gently encourage them to take responsibility and help themselves you can do this by asking open ended questions like what do you think you could do differently next time or you can ask what do you think others are doing that makes it work for them or in my case with my mom she constantly complained about her poor health and that she couldn't walk because her knee hurt and all that stuff but every time i gently suggested to her that there are things she could do like yoga like this like that i i try to educate her on the health benefits of different things even bought her a yoga mat gave her a bunch of yoga videos did she do any of it no she just always complained about all the aches and pains and how her body was not functioning and all that so finally i said to her so what are you doing to make it better and she kind of paused and said well i don't know um nothing really So I said okay but here's the thing from now on you can no longer complain if you're not willing to do anything about it and if you're not doing anything about it I'll tell you not to complain and guess what happened she stopped complaining because every time she did I would go and what are you doing about that and she wouldn't have any answers <laughs> and so she wasn't getting the results she was expecting out of the dynamic I was holding her accountable So you can show empathy for their feelings but avoid enabling their mentality. You can acknowledge their pain while also highlighting solutions or ways forward. You can say things like it looks like you are still upset about whatever they're talking about in the past. That or you can say it seems like you didn't think this was fair that way you're acknowledging their feelings but not condoning their actions or getting involved with solutions so you're kind of mirroring what they're saying but you're not really providing them anything beyond that you could offer solutions and suggestions but remember they may decline by making excuses or they may ignore you So it's better to acknowledge them without getting involved or if you're going to offer something just offer it without expectations that they'll actually do it. Let's continue this conversation in the comments. What has been your experience with victim-minded people? I would love to hear from you and again like and subscribe to my channel 
Thank you for listening and I'll see you in the next one.